Today I'm bringing back the SIG 226 for you, and not just any SIG 226, a used police trade-in 226. The biggest question you're probably asking is why would I spend on a used gun a couple hundred dollars less than it would cost for me to get like a brand new Glock 17? How is this a better carry gun? It weighs more. It holds less ammunition, it's in 40 cal, which nobody likes, and it's got extra controls on there. Well, what I'm about to say may sound a little crazy at first, but hear me out. I think you'll be on board after this video. First things first, 40 cal. I did not give 40 and 45 the proper recognition they needed until just recently see in my head i had always decided you know for like end of the world you want 223 9 millimeter and 12 gauge i still stand behind that i believe that's what you need because that's what everybody has if you have to scavenge for ammo that will be the most likely to get but what about that space we're in right now before the end of the world stores are still up and running you're still going to work that's where your oddball calibers really come to shine here. Your 40, 45. Now they're not crazy oddball like SIG 357 that just barely anyone carries, but they're oddball enough to where they're not that attractive. Day one of the new gun panic, which was months ago, literally a line of people came into the store. They bought all the 223 except for a couple of niche boxes. All the 9mm. And that was about it. That was the ones that were gone immediately. We've had ammo on back order forever now. We still can't get it. Yeah, you can find it online, but you're going to pay some bucks for it. We still have in the case right now 40 and 45. You can still get 40 and 45. So. The time period leading up to the end of the world, which is most likely what we'll all see and, you know, we'll never actually hit the end of the world, hopefully, please, but there will be several, several points in history where we'll be in this period we're in right now where there's an ammo crunch. Now, this is where your 40 and 45 come in because you can still get that ammunition. It's still available. Now, why a used gun over a brand new gun? Because originally this is like a thousand dollars. You can buy those for under 500 bucks. You can even get the ones with the rails on it. I was actually going to order one in. There was 30 of them that popped up in my distributor yesterday. And a customer came in and started talking to me. He was talking to me for about an hour. Went to go place my order. They're out of stock. But these are still at the distributor. So even right now you should still be able to get these for under $500. If they're charging more than 500, they're ripping you off. Just go somewhere else. Now, we're past the fact that you're buying a $1,000 gun for 50% off. What makes a double single... Now, what a double single action means is you can either cock the hammer and shoot it, or you can just pull the trigger and shoot it. This gun does not have any safeties. So let's pretend I just put in a full magazine, I racked it. This one's a little bit wore out, so it doesn't, the slide stop don't work. Otherwise, normally the slide would lock open. Like this, but under a full magazine, which this one's empty, it'll just rack like that. Your hammer will be back. You have a very, very crisp trigger pull. Or put in your full magazine, rack it, and then you can decock it with this little lever right here. That lets your hammer down. Now you have a very heavy trigger pull that takes a very deliberate pull. Accidentally shooting this would be very tough. Plus, when you holster it, if you put your finger on top of the hammer, I'm pulling really hard. And I can't pull the trigger because there's just not enough mechanical advantage to move my finger off the hammer. So you can put your finger on the hammer, holster it, and you don't have to worry about accidentally shooting yourself. And that does happen from time to time, especially with just strike your fire only guns. So, now you have a gun that's exponentially safer to holster. It has a nice heavy trigger pull, there's no safety. See, this is heavier than a Glock trigger pull on double action, and it's a lot longer, but then if you're cocked back, 
you have a much lighter trigger pull, a much shorter trigger pull than a Glock. So you get the best of both worlds. You don't have to take some soy boy compromise of the two of them in order to still be safe, but still be able to hit shit. Takedown's a little bit different. So you're going to lock your slide to the rear, you're going to flip this lever down, and then your slide's going to come off. Your capacity's down a little bit. You're looking at 12 round magazines. I swear I fit more than 12 in here before, but I checked my video footage and I'm only getting 12. So how much of an accuracy difference is there really? Now, thank God I'm shooting from behind me, because otherwise you would have seen me chewing on my lip, which it's still really sore and it started to bleed because I just got so into shooting that it was that nice to shoot. Let's start out at 75 yards, roughly. We'll just go offhand. Now, before you get discouraged on the lack of hits on here, understand this is an actual silhouette target. This is as big as the eight ring. Bottom matches up there and then the sides. So this whole tray only fits inside the eight ring. So even offhand, because my other two shots went right there, I still would have hit a human sized silhouette target. That's offhand at 75 yards, just standing there all willy nilly like, just going like this and shooting. Now, the reason I'm shooting a little bit high, yes, I did get one dead center, and I did hit one off here. But with a 45, I can't the sights just slightly at about 75 yards because the 45 is a much slower bullet, so it drops a little bit quicker. If I wouldn't have been canting the sights, I probably would have had the two shots right here. This one would have been like right there, and that one would have been right there there so I would have still got all five hits so let's check out 75 at a rest I actually fired six shots. I got one, two, three, four, and then five, six, as you see in the picture right there. Again, they would have all been on a human sized silhouette target. That's 75 yards at a rest. So, like, you pull up to Walmart, there's some wacko out there just offing people, and you go off the hood of your car. That would be like that. That's similar to that, would be like. So you can definitely make some effective shots. But what about at a more realistic range? We'll go roughly 25 yards. It's probably closer to 20 because I couldn't get all the way back because there was a couple of vehicles blocking my way. So about 20 yards. What am I shooting at that? Roughly 20, 25 yards, I fired 12 shots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, I lost count. Oh, right there's the other one. 11, 12. All of them inside the 8 ring on a human-sized silhouette target, offhand, 
There was even like two or three shots I pulled, which might have been these. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't. You'll have to go back to the footage, but you'll see because I, I shoot. I'm like, bang, and then this trigger's so light, it takes a little bit to get used to, because, I mean, this is a really good trigger, and I accidentally sent off my other shot before I was ready. And the trigger reset. All right, so here's your normal trigger pull. Like, you're just aiming at your target. Very light. You got your wall right there. I'm up against the wall. Little bit of creep in the snap. You reset. I don't know how well you guys will be able to see it. It's right there. So I hit my reset. Back on the wall. Zero creep. So until you get used to the trigger, you might accidentally send two shots really fast. Don't panic. You know, it just takes a little bit of time. Another thing you got to get used to with this firearm is the controls are actually in the right position. Let me put in a mag that actually locks it open. This is a Mechgar mag, like a legitimate after Mechgar mag. They kind of suck. The original SIGs are made by Mechgar, but these are made of a higher quality. So... Normally, how they set up firearms, for whatever reason, the decocker's in the rear, and then the slide drop is in the front. This one's actually where it should be, because you're more likely to use your slide release. And then you wouldn't use your decocker until you're done shooting. But normally on firearms, they have these two screwed up, and then your decocker's right here, and your slide release is up here. So that takes a little bit to get used to, because they're actually in the right position. But all the controls, very easy to use. Like right now, my thumb is on the slide release. Right there, without changing my shooting position at all. I can work all the controls. The decocker is a stretch, but that's okay because I don't want to accidentally decock the firearm. Now these come with night sights, but they've given up the ghost a long time ago. I believe they only got a half-life of like 12 years. I'd have to double check, but I believe this was made in 1992. So, if you are looking at a full size like combat gun that you're going to have like on a holster or in a nightstand or on a chest rig. I strongly recommend picking up one of these. Yes, you should also have a Glock. This way, if the end of the world does actually happen, because you're more likely to find 9mm ammo, you can still find ammo out there. A huge disadvantage to this though, is this is for right hand people only. You left handed weirdos are screwed. There's just no way a left handed person could use, I mean they could. But it would be like a month in a football. These are a right-handed only gun. Yeah, again, a left-handed person could use it. But, for real. It's better if you're right-handed. And this, compared to a Glock, this is like a Rolex. A Glock is more like a Timex. Yes, they both can do the job. They both can do the job good. But this has got style, craftsmanship. It's a beautiful firearm. Strongly recommended. Anyway, if you like to check out any of my other videos, click on the links up here. If you'd like to help support the channel, I got my Patreon. I also got affiliate links in the description down below. Even if you don't buy what the link is for, just clicking on that link and doing the Amazon shopping you were going to do anyway, I get a little kickback for it because you went there off of my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.